what do you, you you find it now a lot more scouts are coming into MLS because they un, they're understanding that these players can make an impact in leagues around the world whether it's Serie A which the Premier League La Liga that money that comes into the club that you've just sold that player is there rules and stipulations where you have to invest a certain amount of money maybe into the academy into the infrastructure of your club and also is there also a revenue sharing between the clubs when a player is sold from MLS yeah, no, no, good question. Um, and once, once again, the the section on that in the rule book is probably like twenty seven pages. So, you you get and it's it's owner's discretion. So whatever the tr- the transfer fee is, you can get X amount. I think it's and it depends what category. If you're homegrown, you got to keep all the money. If it's a draft pick, if it's a player that you've you've signed and paid a transfer fee, that comes off. So your, you know what what your net money is. Um, I think the highest level is you can get 1.1 million in GAM as long as the owners want to put that back into the club relative to the transfer fee. Um, and if you're a homegrown player, you get 100% of that. If you're, you know, all those different categories. So it's, it's, not, an, it's not a simple answer in terms of that. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's, there's really valuable ways to, to add money to, to sign players. You know, and I think, um, you know, it's club by club. You know, some owners would say, you know, Five million bucks. Let's split it. We'll give you two and a half, which you get to pull back a certain amount for GAM. We keep two and a half, or they may want to, you know, develop infrastructure, like you said. I think it's it's very different club to club. And, you know, the expectation is, and this is always this is always a tricky one. Um, if you're going to get the money back, you're going to be more open to to moving the player. If you're going to move the player and you get nothing back to help your team, then as a club, you that doesn't 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 seem as attractive no, I mean, keep them you know what i mean yeah, yeah and that's not a new thing that's been going on around the world for for a long long time but um it's 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 a really big part of your planning your budget and your you know and uh, and your development it's also the same and i think this is another place where the league has the league has really grown and and by design you know the main reason they added all the the u22 initiative players um we want the league to be a league of choice but also a league of choice for young players. Use Miguel Almiron as the kind of the poster boy. Yeah. You want an 18, 19, 20 year old kid from, from wherever. We want him to come to MLS as opposed to going to, you know, the Eredivisie in, the, in, in Holland or one of the, the Belgian league or one of those kind of second tier leagues. We, we want them to think of MLS as a better pathway. And obviously we look at that and the, the, kind of the opinion of the league and that helps that helps it grow you know we're developing players and they're going on to bigger clubs we also use that as revenue generation so you know atlanta united's bought miguel almiron for 12 million and sold him for whatever it was 35 so that's coming back into the club they can use some of that for roster build you know so that is another huge initiative that um as much as you still want these these top you know the messies and those and those big players i think the league for the long-term kind of growth, I think the, the youth initiative is more important, you know, and it's something that it's changed so much in the last three to five years that basically everyone's changed their, their plan in terms of how they build roster, how they, how they manage their budget and how you, how you, you know, have sustained um, success on the field. The temptation to sign a DP has to be great though, right? When you're running a club and I'm assuming that you have agents constantly on the blower trying to convince you to sign this player, this player. Uh, Tim Apuki was an example in Minnesota when you were there. A, a good yep. signing, I think. You know, It made more sense. He, he wasn't over the hill, still a guy that very much is close to his prime. But how, how yeah. tempting is it to go down, down that path? Yeah, you want to develop and get young players. But when you're getting the, the constant phone calls from agents from overseas saying, this guy's available who, who might not be the right fit. Yeah, it's a tough balance. You just have to look at you know your your group and what you need. Um, you know, they, they've structured the... Uh, the DPs and the third DPs and the young DPs and U22 initiatives to, if you only have two DPs, like, you know, your bigger names, you're uh, over 24 years old or whatever it is relative to the young DPs, you now get more U22 initiatives. So if you do less of the big names, the older players, you get more younger spots. So the league's incentivized it, Um, you know, but you still want those top players, you know, you know, it's like 22, 23 years old. That's kind of the, the point where it's U22 or young DP. You know, does that player have the level? Have they had enough experience scoring goals and playing at, playing at a top level? Um, and then what's, what's the price point? Because normally the, the ones at that age that have done so well and have got such a bright future and future sell-on, 
they're way more expensive and, and probably more difficult to get. So it's, it's just finding that balance. Um, to go to Timu Puki, just in, um, in particular, so we, we had a need. We had an open DP spot, and you know, we needed a goal scorer. We had the second highest XG in the league, and we're you know, creating tons of chances and box entries and all the things. We just didn't have a finisher. So he was someone that you know, we all knew from, from playing at Norwich in the, in the Premier League and in the Championship. Mm-hmm. Um, we scouted him heavily. Um, and we, we wanted someone that was really good in the box. His movement was good. He's got a goal scoring record. He's a good guy, you know, and he, he was a really good fit, but you know, those, you can only have two of those. So you have to be really, really specific and, you know, make sure they're, um, you know, a fit in terms of, in terms of your roster, but it's so heavily incentivized to, to develop younger players. I was going to ask, uh, I sent over the MLS homepage to the, to the guys before this. And uh, as Amy had said, it's all very messy. Craig and I were chatting and I saw this morning about your, <laughs> pardon me. Is there an I at the end of messy? Or- <laughs> yeah. 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 That was the pun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, but Craig and I were talking last week and we were talking about that tightrope, that messy Miami, Inner Miami have to kind of go through with this, how much he's playing, what matches he's playing in. And if there could be a backlash, what do you, what do you think? Cause I know, look, China was a, a bust. Sharms and I talked about that. And last year, Chicago, they, you know, with this surge pricing for Messi, it's not always good for the league. It might be good for Messi, but doesn't always look good. So when does he start wearing it? Or when does Miami start wearing it? And or is there, hey, do what you want, make your money, get the fuck out? What do you think? Yeah, no, that that's a really interesting one. And listen, Messi's a Messi's an outlier. It's just like they changed changed everything for Yeah, Messi, but he's but... the league's outlier now, right? Like that's right. they've never had a Messi before. Not like this. They had Beckham, but that was to build the league. This is kind of the league has been using this guy to build even more. A contract with Apple. We had um you know, we had an interesting take just at our club, you know, our own little, our own little thing. Um, I won't say who said it, but, you know, we had people at the high ups going, I couldn't care less. It does nothing for us. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. league growth. There's all these things. We sell at our, our stadium every game. He does nothing for us. I couldn't care less. You know, I mean, everyone's caught up with the messy stuff, but it's like, what, what, what side are you on? And what is your opinion? Um, I, I do know looking at, you know, messy in terms of the pre the preseason and what they chose to do in terms of the, the amount of travel. That was that was ridiculous. And you know Messi and Suarez and Busquets are going, we're not doing that anymore. Like we're we're going to we're going to China, we're going to the Middle East. We're you know they're just they're just using us. And that is so much travel. And especially when you have an older group of players. I mean they have five or six players older than thirty five. So that that's that load management is going to be probably the most crucial thing for them. I know they left Messi out the other day. I can't remember where they were playing, but they left him out. So they're going to have to manage that. And that preseason was was so ridiculous that you know that the older guys were were sitting around going, "We're not doing this anymore." Like I, I get it. I'm Messi, and you know I got stuff with Adidas. I got stuff with Apple. I'm you know I'm this huge phenomenon. Um, but you can't you can't use me to that degree because ultimately. They're going to get where they want to go because there's success and they've won something. And, you know, that's that's their objectives. Um, obviously, the league has other objectives. There's money, there's growth, there's there's Apple TV stuff. But for for a player like Messi, he's going, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Because, you know, in the end, you're, you're going to get a, a lesser version of me and I'll be susceptible mm-hmm. to injuries. And let's say he has a, a, a big injury. He does, you know. Tears a, tears a muscle, tears an ACL, something. He's he's gone for an extended period of time. So, you know, th- they need to be a part of that process in terms of being concerned that we're not pushing this marketing phenomenon too far. And in the end, he gets injured, and then we're all screwed. So, that, I mean, I, that's the one thing that jumped out for me is that, like you said, that, that preseason schedule and trying to maximize everything they they can. And I think I think they're I think they're fortunate. It seems like there's there was no major injuries, but you still won't know until they get into the season in terms of the the longer term impact in terms of him and his um, his health and his freshness. So we'll we'll see on that one. One thing about the league, I guess, Wadi, is that is you know you don't have to win it. 
you know, you need to get into the playoffs. You need to have a good mm-hmm. run. You have to be in good form going into the playoffs. And when they left Messi and Suarez, well, Messi out completely. Suarez came on later in the match against uh, Montreal. Um, right. And then he played in the Champions uh, League Cup uh, CONCACAF Championship against Nashville. So it seems like they're putting a lot of emphasis on the cha- CONCACAF Championship, uh, primarily because they probably want to be in that 32 32- team world cup the first one Mm -hmm. and then the league you know we can we we don't necessarily have to win it but we we can kind of play around with Messi, give him some time here and there and suarez and and look after their load management during the league and then take it more seriously down down the far end of of the season no absolutely yeah but that's that's going to be crucial you know tata's he's probably got it all planned out i mean i'm sure there's pressure from the league to play in certain markets you know they're selling these big stadiums in whatever market it is I'm sure there's some some guarantee that he he needs to be playing. Um, so they, I'm assuming they have the whole season mapped out in terms of this is what we'd like to do. Obviously, you can't really account for injuries, and that could, that'll change everything. But you have to assume there's a plan, and mm-hmm. he's playing in these in these major games. Um, kind of a similar situation, not on the messy level, but just kind of the next tier down. I, I coached in Orlando, and we had Kaká, and it, it was a mm-hmm. it was a similar situation. Obviously, it wasn't you know changing TV deals, but he was obviously a a top top player, and the league basically said, you know, we want him to play in LA and New York and all these different places, and you know we were trying to manage him as a player, and he's a fantastic guy, so we like, hey, listen, let's let's look at a schedule and we'll try to do this, and you'll play play every home game, and then let's let's look at you know the away games and. Obviously, there's there's games you have to play in, and he just said, "No, I'm not doing it. I want to play in every game." And it it wasn't good for him because he 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 he'd get injured after you know playing for six or eight weeks, and then he'd he'd need two or three weeks to kind of get back going. But he was still so competitive, uh, and just wanted to play every game. And you know, we were trying to protect him from himself in terms of let's be smart about this. You're 35. You're at that age where you know with the travel, you you can't play every game. You can't play. 34 league games, the preseason games, the Open Cup games, the League's Cup games, the play, you know, it's just not possible. It's, you know, probably up near 60 games. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had, a, we had a, a similar situation with him, obviously not on the messy level, but it's, it's a tricky one because you, there's so many factors and you've got to factor in the player. And, you mm-hmm. know, as much as they understand the big picture, they're really competitive and they may not want to train, but they, they certainly want to, they want to play games. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic for sure.